Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, traders. Wherever you are in the world, I hope you're doing well. I hope you're safe. I hope you're healthy. I hope you've got a big smile on your face, and I hope you're catching pips as usual. Pips of Persia here. In today's video, I want to talk about funded accounts or proprietary funding, as some of you may know it by, specifically because recently, more than ever, there have been whispers about people wanting to get access to funded accounts, and a lot of people have been messaging me, asking me questions about funded accounts and what I think about them. So hopefully, this video will help you in that journey. Now, to be completely honest with you, I didn't want to do this as a PowerPoint presentation, but I thought if it's going to help you guys, then that's most definitely worth it. And before we get started, I just want to say thank you very much for 5,000 subscribers. I did not expect to get to 5k so quickly. I appreciate each and every single one of you, and I will continue to post good content throughout 2021 for you all as well. So let's go ahead and jump straight into it. For those of you who don't know what funded accounts are, let me break it down in a very quick way. There are platforms out there, companies out there that have access to very large investors. And what they do is they, in a way, want to find out who is a good trader. And as long as you can, in a way, prove to them that you're a good trader, they are willing to fund you multiple four figures, multiple five figures, in some cases, multiple six figures for you to be able to trade with that firm's money. And the beautiful thing is oftentimes practically 99% of the time you are not liable for the losses this is a risk that that firm is taking you always have to double check it with the specific proprietary funding company but oftentimes you know it's the firm's risk not yours now how it works is in in majority of the cases if you can prove to them that you are a good profitable trader then they will fund you a certain amount of money and you're going to be splitting the profit sometimes it's 50 50 you keep 50% of whatever you make in a month and they keep 50% sometimes it could be 70-30 in your favor and in other cases it could even be 80-20 in your favor, in the trader's favor. So as this trading industry is growing more and more and more, there are more companies out there that are becoming better known for their prop trading elements, such as FTMO, that's a platform that I know a lot of you have heard of, a lot of you are looking into, or maybe a lot of you are even trading on the FTMO accounts right now. So generally speaking, it can definitely speed up a trader's journey, but the point of this video is to speak about it from a completely unbiased perspective and in a way talk about the do's and don'ts and also talk about what's good about it and what's not really good about it. Now I personally don't think funded accounts are a bad way to grow your capital so I personally think it is indeed a good way to grow your capital especially because a lot of the people who want to get involved in this industry they don't necessarily have that massive amount of money at the beginning to be able to make good money from the beginning and um, oftentimes it's about depositing maybe 100 200 pounds and compound in that over time and that requires a lot of psychology a lot of patience a lot of consistency is quite difficult so definitely it could be a good way to grow your capital however in my personal opinion it has been oversimplified quite a bit of course, instead of putting £500 in your trading account, it kind of makes sense to pay that to a prop trading firm. And if you pass their tests, then obviously you can get access to a multiple six or even seven figure account, right? Which theoretically makes your journey to six and seven figures much smoother and faster. But that's a lot easier said than done. I'm not currently on any kind of prop trading accounts. However, there's a number of people in our community that I work with who are on the funded accounts and they will probably tell you the same thing. As pretty as funded that accounts can sound like and as easy as the tests may seem and as much as they could genuinely be a phenomenal way for you to grow your capital you cannot let any of those factors affect your judgment in whether or not you want to proceed with them and the reason I say that is because you can't just take into account the good things and think to yourself oh my god yeah this is amazing I'm definitely going to go ahead and trade on the funded accounts so hopefully you know in the next couple of slides you will get full information about exactly what I mean about it. So let's speak a little bit more about the actual truth behind the funded accounts. There's number one, a testing phase, especially if I'm talking about FTMO, there's a testing phase at the end of the day, you know, and being tested as a human being is always something that each and every single one of us consciously or subconsciously, we would always want to prove ourselves. So um, for example, for FTMO, uh, obviously the test, you can pass it technically in 20 trading days. That's the quickest you can pass their test, but it can take as, as long as 90 days, three months as well. A lot of people who, you know, want to uh, apply for 
for FTMO, even if they are an established and a good trader, as soon as they go through the testing phase, everything gets ruined. Because even if they want to consciously control their emotions, even on a subconscious level, they are constantly wanting to prove themselves. They don't think to themselves, oh, let me actually be a little bit more consistent and a little bit slower with it. They think to themselves, oh, I want to pass this test today or tomorrow. I want to be able to, you know, pass the threshold within a few days rather than, let's say, a couple months. And that in itself is a massive, massive problem because when you approach it from that mentality, then obviously your trading is going to be affected. You're going to end up taking trades that you normally wouldn't. Maybe you'll end up risking more than you should on those accounts. And before you know it, you have failed the test or maybe you have lost that 10% of their capital. And normally, you know, in, in majority of the um, prop trading firms, when you lose 5 or 10%, depending on what they say, they take the account away from you. You can sometimes reapply, but um, that's it. You're going to have to go through the process of reapplying for the funded account again. The second point is the trading criteria. Um, oftentimes, the different prop trading firms have very specific set of rules in place. Um, it could be your leverage. It could be the broker that you're using. It could be, for example, whether you're allowed to keep trades open overnight or over the weekend. Um, different, for example, um, asset classes that they would let you trade, etc., etc. There's a lot of different things um, that might not match your specific trading plan. So if you have had a trading plan in place and you are completely used to it and your day-to-day -day life is revolving around that specific trading style, then all of a sudden when you go and apply for the funded accounts and um, you know you might not be able to necessarily follow your specific trading plan, that can also affect your psychology and affect your trading, which might delay you passing the test or might even stop you from passing the test. I'm going to give you solutions for all of these as well, by the way. I'm not here just to say, oh, these are the bad points of it. No, these are the points that, you know, they're not too difficult to actually go around them. So I will give you solutions for these as well. Third point is larger than normal capital could mean more stress. And what I mean by that is um, oftentimes people who want to apply for proprietary funding, you're not used to seeing multiple five figures or multiple six figures in your trading account. Although the percentage risk stays the same, so although technically you are going to be risking the same percentage, half a percent or one percent or whatever it may be, the actual monetary value is going to be significantly larger. So when you actually see that, as much as you want to control your psychology, if for example you see a thousand dollars loss and that's still one percent of 100 grand, it's going to affect you differently than losing maybe one or two pounds or 10 pounds or, you know, 100 pounds and all of these different figures. So that's another point that throws a lot of people off. As soon as you start to trade and you see bigger figures, naturally you're using larger lot sizes, it makes you more stressed. Signals is another very big thing. A lot of people have asked me about signals for FTMO accounts and all of these different things. One thing I want you to understand is majority of the prop trading firms out there frown upon you taking signals and growing their accounts, which is fair enough because if they have, for example, um, let's say 20 people who have got access to their accounts and all of these 20 people are taking signals from the same platform or from the same person, then imagine if that person doesn't send signals anymore or imagine if that person goes on a streak of losses. That specific specific trading firm is going to, you know, in a way have to actually pay for that other person's mistakes. Don't aim to take signals to pass the FDMO accounts or any other um, proprietary funding platform that you might be looking at. There are probably people out there who have taken signals and have gotten to multiple six and seven figures. So the possibility is there. The probability, in my opinion, is extremely low. Understand that in this market, you want to become independent. You want to be able to do it yourself. So just start to learn, practice more. And when you're ready, then apply for the accounts. Next point is about compounding or withdrawing from your funded accounts. So sometimes people think that I'm going to get access to a six figure account and I'm just going to be compounding this over the next months to come. Understand that doing that obviously is not a bad thing to do. I like the idea of compounding. You'll end up trading with more capital, etc., etc. However, it would be a good idea to withdraw as well. One of the main things I've always spoken about is preserving your capital. So what, the money that you make, try and withdraw it and maybe even deposit that into your own trading account and grow it, you know, over time. So in a way you have something to fall back on. As a subsection of what I meant by compounding and withdrawing, I simply meant greed. This is where greed comes into play, where month by month traders might think, let me just compound it more and more and more and more and more. And eventually they would make an emotional mistake. We are human beings at the end of the day. Every single one of us eventually is going to make some type of an emotional error. 
And that emotional error may result in you losing months worth of a compounded account. The aim, in my personal opinion, for the funded accounts are to try and make money from them and deposit it into your own trading accounts. That way you have a lot more freedom to be able to grow. That way you have a lot more control over your capital. And whether you want to compound that or withdraw it to do whatever you want is completely in your hands. The last point is a little bit more obvious points in the way that, for example, if you're used to trading cryptocurrencies, um, but your specific prop trading firm is not going to allow you to trade crypto for whatever reason then obviously that's going to be a major barrier to you actually being able to pass a test or maybe you're used to trade indices or whatever some type of an asset class that that given prop trading firm is not going to let you trade so you obviously have to make some changes to your specific trading style if you want to go for it which makes the journey longer um, and if you want to apply for the funded accounts there and then it could mean that you might have a higher probability of not passing the test rather than passing it um, other things such as spreads also matter because at the end of the day chances are on those prop trading accounts you are going to be trading with a different broker than you're normally used to so um, the spreads can be slightly different you have to account for those and differences in spreads increase your stop losses if need be um, not only that the prices can be slightly different on those specific brokers versus what you see on trading view or your specific trading account so not only you might have to allow a little bit larger stop losses but also you have to double check the prices with what you see when you analyze versus when you execute to make sure that your stop losses are indeed in the correct place so these are some of the factors that are not commonly spoken about but it is at the end of the day very important for each and every single one of you to know because uh, as I said it's been oversimplified a little bit it's been described as this walk in the park where you go and apply for the test and give them money and then pass the test and you know maybe even get a refund on your capital and whatever it may be and get access to the account as if it's such an easy thing to do. It's not necessarily that easy. There's a lot of different things that you have to take into account. Now, these don't mean funded accounts are a bad way to grow. As I said, I still think that funded accounts are a good way to grow your capital if you approach them the correct way. So they simply mean you have to be much more prepared than you think you should be. The first obvious point about that would be to practice. There's no need and no reason to apply for a prop trading account if you're not even and consistent trading on your own demo or on your own live account. It is worth taking the time out to perfect the strategy or perfect the trading style that you have for you to then be able to access these accounts for a much longer period of time and therefore over the next few months and years be able to build your wealth and build your capital. And this is indeed a way that that wealth can stay with you for the rest of your life. Trading habits is another very important thing for you to develop before you access those accounts. If on a daily or weekly or monthly basis you find yourself that you're not in a very specific kind of trading routine, then that in itself is also an issue. I'm not saying every single day you need to wake up at six in the morning UK time and look at charts and get ready for London session, but you might want to depending on your specific trading strategy. Um, but what I'm trying to say is I'm not saying be that strict with yourself. If you are, then even better but you at least need to have a, a specific trading habit in place knowing exactly how much you risk, knowing exactly how much you're going to be earning for every trade that you take, knowing your specific set of rules for executing those trades, having an area that you normally want to sit down and analyze your charts or execute your trades. All of these things are very, very important for the psychology of the trader, which in fact will affect your funded trading accounts as well. So don't aim to develop that trading habits during the test or after you pass the funded account tests, develop it before so you have a much higher probability of being able to access those accounts. And I know a lot of people are going to ask, okay, what is a good trading habit or a trading plan in a way to have? This is honestly different for everyone. This is something that you have to develop for yourself depending on um, you know, your daily routine, depending on your other commitments on what you do throughout the day and throughout the week, depending on what currency pairs or what asset classes you want to trade, what sessions you want to trade on, what days of the week you want to trade, what time of day you want to trade. All of these stuff is very important. If you haven't developed your trading habit or trading plan yet, chances are you are still in your beginner stages of a trader, even if you have been trading for a few years. So you just got to be a little bit more consistent with it. The advice that I would give is start off by having a specific number of hours every single day that you're going to be focusing on your own charts and on your own trades. And over time, your trading habits most definitely will develop. Third point, very obvious one, don't rush it. There is no reason to want to rush getting to those funded accounts. 
This is another thing that I have seen a lot. People would want to get involved in the foreign exchange industry because they want to make quick money. They might not even necessarily be comfortable with putting two, three hundred pounds in their own trading account, but what they want to do is quickly learn a strategy, pay that money to a prop trading firm and get access to one of their accounts, go through the test. That's not how it works. Understand that this, this industry is not a get rich quick scheme, you know, and unfortunately this is something that has been portrayed by, um, by practically any and every YouTube trading advert that you see or any other trading adverts that you have ever seen. But that's just not the truth about this industry. Think to yourself genuinely what you want out of it and give yourself a couple years at least to be able to learn and master it and every single day practice properly, develop a proper habit and then apply for the funded accounts if need be. You know, maybe I've exaggerated a little bit by saying a couple years. It depends on the person. Instead of me saying a couple years, I'm going to say number of hours. Aim to put a few hundred hours in at least to develop yourself as a person, develop your trading habits and then apply for the funded accounts. It's worth it over time to go through that annoying phase and annoying stage of not being consistent and then being able to break out of that and get access to the funded account and genuinely be able to build your wealth over time. And especially don't rush it when it comes to the test. Don't try and pass the test in a day or two just because you want to look cool in front of everyone else or just because, for example, all of your friends and family have disagreed with you doing trading and they've never been supportive of you and now you just want to pass that test for you to then be able to, in a way, prove them wrong. That's not the point and that's not the reason reason why we are trading and why we are doing what we are doing. So don't rush it, take the time, master it properly and approach it with the correct mindset. Next point is another obvious one. Spend time to research that prop trading platform properly. A lot of people who want to apply for the FTMO accounts don't even know the FTMO metrics, don't even know what broker they're going to be trading on, don't even know all of the important information, don't even know what the testing phase is. You have to spend time to research these platforms properly. Go on their website read all of the frequently asked questions, read all the information that you have there, watch whatever videos they might have posted over there, whatever platform you're looking at, not just FTMO. You have to research the platform properly to know everything about them in terms of profit split and how the withdrawals are going to be paid out, how the testing phase works, what broker they're going to let you trade on, what asset classes, whether you can hold trades open overnight or over the weekend if that applies to your set of rules a lot of different questions you have to ask them. It might even be worth going on the customer service chat and asking them questions as well, going on YouTube and watching more videos about that specific prop trading firm to get more information about them. You have to research the platform properly and know everything about them before you even decide to go ahead and apply for a funded account. And before doing that, also make sure to do the trials, right? A lot of the prop trading firms out there, they will allow you to do a trial. I know FTMO allows you to do a trial as well where in a way they will give you access to a demo account I'm going to say with the same metrics that they would have on their actual funded accounts and they would allow you to test it out allow you to see if you're ready for it or not don't just jump into the test try their trials first or at least recreate the same metrics for yourself on a demo account spend some time going through that demo account and trading on it or trading on the trial account because that will allow you to know which parts of your trading needs a little bit more development before approaching it. And if you happen to pass the trial, then you're clearly more ready for the funded account. But that in itself is still not a reflection of just because you've passed the trial, you're most definitely going to be able to get access to those accounts. Because as we all know, trial is going to be much different to the actual test. But still, this is a brilliant way, in my opinion, to prepare yourself for the actual test. It's like a mock test, I'm going to say, right? If you are genuinely serious in this industry, and if you are genuinely serious about making it in this industry, then it's most definitely worth making the journey to six and seven figures is more delayed by doing their trial maybe even a few times before applying for the actual accounts. And finally, I'm going to reiterate the most important point in this entire video, which is stop trying to teleport your way to six and seven figures. A lot of people in this industry are sitting down with their calculators thinking to themselves, okay, if I put, you know, 500 pounds in a trading account and grow it by consistent 20% every single week, then after these many months, I'm going to be touching upon seven figures. And they always tend to create these scenarios for themselves. And these scenarios, these, these type of ideology that is in a way telling you that it's easy to get to six and seven figures. It's not as easy as a lot of new traders seem to think, right? Um, but put these ideologies out of your mind. Stop trying to teleport your way to six and seven figures. Be a little bit more patient in your journey. Um, understand that at the very beginning stages, it's all about learning the skill set and mastering that skill set. It's the skill set that's going to stay with you for the rest of your life. 
and it's this skill set that you will be able to apply to a lot of different industries, a lot of different financial markets as well. So take the time, practice, develop your trading habits, stop trying to rush your way to six and seven figures, research the platforms properly and do the trials. And then you're going to be much, much more ready for you to then be able to apply for those tests and pass them. So I hope this video has given you a little bit more information about my opinion towards funded accounts and what is probably the best way for you to be able to approach them. If you got value from this video, do make sure to press the like button down below. And if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel. Welcome to the family. Welcome to our community. Once again, thank you very much for 5,000 subscribers. But with that being said, let's elevate and let's catch some pips.